So we're going to sit down and have a conversation here. This is the book launch. Um, yeah, show the next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, next slide. Huh? Okay, there we are. Seven <laughs> euros. Yes. Well, uh, so this is uh, this is the book um, which we produced together over the last uh, half year. Uh, a, a really great uh, collaboration between um, Netherlands and uh, Italy. Uh, so uh, we're very proud to be uh, the publishers of many uh, uh, autonomous uh, thinkers and groups, uh, collectives. Uh, so um, this is yet another uh, example. Okay, um, I'm going to say uh, a few things uh, about my take on, on this question, short contribution, and then we uh, go to have a, a debate about uh, the book and uh, about what we just uh, saw. Um, for me, uh, what it boils down to uh, is really a, a question of uh, new forms of uh, organization. And um, what Macau uh, showed to us was not just a model, let's say, uh, of a new uh, uh, the 13th or 27th uh, cryptocurrency, no. Uh, uh, what was uh, being proposed here with the Bank of the Commons uh, is not just a, a new financial institution, but is a new form of social organization. This, I, I think this is very uh, important. Where are we uh, since, uh, let's say, Occupy? You have not mentioned Occupy, and I thought that was very, very interesting, uh, because uh, Occupy uh, uh, is also, especially in activist circles, uh, somehow also a, um, a frustration. Uh, people get very depressed about uh, the failures of that movement. So much uh, that uh, since 2011, some people even think that the whole idea or the category of social movements as such uh, has become uh, problematic. Mm -hmm. And uh, th of course, this has also got to do with the rise of what, what I call uh, you know, social protest as an event, where not the, the social uh, movement is the motor behind the event, but as we know, uh, social media uh, are becoming um, uh, increasingly important in the background uh, and bring people together. Yes, I will attend this riot. Yes. Uh, so you say on Facebook, yes, I, uh, I'm coming to the riot. Yes. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of uh, where, uh, where we are. And uh, we have to, of course, there is a lot of discontent at the moment. Uh, with the model of uh, the social media as, as the contemporary, uh, as the dominant form of organization, right? Uh, and um, uh, I read uh, this book uh, also as a, as a, as a, as a struggle uh, to build, a, let's say, a political framework uh, to uh, answer this, uh, this, this question. Um, in my analysis, which I'm uh, doing together with Ned Rossiter in, um, uh, in Sydney, uh, I am emphasizing uh, on another model. And uh, our proposal is called organized networks. Organized networks are the opposite of the weak link that Facebook uh, is promoting. Huh? Facebook is really benefiting and all the other social media from uh, you know the expanding quickly expanding your network uh, from the friends of the friends of the friends we all know this this logic right we're, we're, a, we're a part of it on a on a daily uh, basis we are actively uh, participating uh, in that weak link uh, model of event event driven um, protests and uh, activities. Maybe uh, this, ev this gathering here is also a Facebook event. I'm, I'm not really sure. Anyway, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But uh, uh, just to say that this, yes or no? Uh, no? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, so um, what we say is uh, what we have to counter this uh, by creating strong links. And there, there are uh, a lot of organizations already that emphasize uh, this element. Uh, the, the strong links organization could be a co-op, could be a collective, can be anything, right? 
But having said that, with the collective, for instance, there is, there is, this, there is another problem, right? The, the, there was in, in the past a lot of the problems of the social dynamic uh, within the small group. We don't want to go back uh, to this kind of uh, uh, momentum uh, of, uh, of the isolated uh, small group, right? So how can we create networks with strong links? And what, why I'm saying networks is that I believe we need to reinvent and defend the idea of the network because the network logic, believe it or not, uh, is under threat. And it's under threat by platform capitalism. Uh, the platform wants to overcome uh, the shatteredness of all the networks, right? And this is precisely what Facebook is doing, all, all the rest, Uber, Facebook, uh, Amazon, Amazon uh, you name it, right? Uh, they were once building uh, these networks, but then abandoned the logic. Uh, why? Because the networks, in the end, they are decentralized, they, they go their own way, they cannot be controlled, they, can, yeah? they maybe re require other software, other needs, right? This is what happens with networks. Hmm? They have a very strong kind of autopoetic uh, desire to, to further develop themselves in a, in a certain direction. For platform capitalism, this is impossible, right? And look at Facebook. It's very, very restrictive, right? It, it does not allow anything, any, any change. There's no personalization happening whatsoever, right? It's a complete standardized uh, environment. Huh? Okay, so platform capitalism uh, is in fact destroyed uh, the networks on the long term, right? In the beginning, it was profiting from it, but now, uh, now, now that uh, the platforms have established themselves, in the next uh, round, it will be about the abolition uh, of the network uh, logic uh, itself. And that's why I'm saying, uh, and that's why we are proposing uh, to further think about strong links in a networked environment. Uh, because I don't think we will go back, right? Offline romanticism, we are not uh, going there. That is not an option. The option is not to preach, uh, you know, the, the offline, right? The, off, the, off, yeah, the offline is nice, it's, it's a holiday opportunity, maybe, uh, you know, but maybe, yeah, it, it's, it's okay uh, if you just wanna uh, chill out, uh, th th that's fine. Uh, but uh, from a political perspective, from an economic uh, perspective of organizing workers, or so, this is really not uh, the way to go. So uh, we need to further think and further think through and experience, um, build prototypes, make failures uh, within the network logic. Because I defend the network. Uh, not because I, I'm running the Institute of Network Cultures, <laughs> but uh, because I strongly believe in certain values that the network has. For instance, like the decentralized nature of it, which gives us unique opportunities, right? Absolutely. And this is something uh, we, uh, we need to defend. Uh, because um, the national uh, populism, for instance, uh, of course, uh, it can only deal with platforms, right? Uh, it will not. It will not allow uh, the diversity uh, of the of the of the networks. Okay. So yeah. That, so this is my small contribution. Um, and um, now I want to uh, ask uh, Alex maybe to say something more about his idea of uh, of uh, organization. Yeah. And you can, you can all join uh, in uh, if you have a question. If you want to. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Thank you. No, 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 not at all. It, 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 uh, yeah, maybe, but we are living uh, in, 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 a, in a technological age. So we are not just talking about organizing some workers in a, in a factory based on, on anarcho-syndicalistic uh, practices. My proposal uh, has got to do with the fact that organization today uh, is by definition a, a socio technological uh, uh, construct. The, and this is what makes it so different, let's say also, from the 19th century uh, syndicalist uh, movement. Today, 
we are dealing with the precariat. And this is, these are dispersed groups of people, networks. These are uh, people who, are, who cannot be organized along the lines of the factory. Forget it. Huh? So this is where... Uh, Talking about maybe inspiration for um, Maybe. Yeah, but the inspiration can be... But I don't know. It's yeah. generally speaking libertarian in approach. But then, uh, I mean, the book is written... Uh, with a sense to federate uh, se several political uh, identities and subjectivities around a project, uh, an ideological project led by the precariat. But to answer Gert's question, I think like the problem of organized networks today is their leaderless uh, heritage. Okay, I mean. One thing that the, the 2000, the, um, uh, yeah, the movement of the square has in common with the um, anti-colonization movement was decision by consent, you know, like this, okay. And, and of course that, I mean, uh, it's good for strategic decisions, Negri would argue in uh, his latest book, uh, Assembly, but it's not good for tactical decisions. So it's, this was one of the failures of Occupy after May the 2012, but municipalism that definitely has been a lasting victory, I think, of 2011. I mean, even of Occupy, if you look at Bill de Blasio, I mean, of course, it's not, uh, okay, Jack London, but still, uh, in the sense, yeah, I mean, his election is, uh, cannot be comprehended without the uh, Occupy movement. So, um, the, I mean, I think anti-capitalism actually comes in various brands, uh, and uh, so anarcho-green, anarcho-feminist, anarcho-autonomist manifestations are probably more important than syndicalist manifestations. Okay, too. but uh, uh, yeah, your book, uh, uh, when you read it, you'll be really surprised to hear that Alex is, is promoting a lot of... Uh, not modest, but let's say still radical reformist uh, proposals. Huh? Now, my question is, uh, yeah, I understand that. We need to create new majorities, right? We need to cre create, uh, if you like, uh, is, is in your words, a, a new popular front uh, to create new uh, ma majorities. Um, which political form... Uh, you know, goes with that. Because, of course, we, we know from, from Spain and from, from Greece, uh, there, is, yeah. there is now the, the real, a real tension uh, between uh, the party and the movement. Yeah. Uh, how, how can we deal with that? How can we overcome this? Is that something that, uh, you know, all the other countries will have to deal with uh, as well? Are we really stuck again in this kind of uh, 70s uh, problem? Yeah. Should I join the party or uh, should I join the movement? Yeah. I mean, sorry. Uh. Uh, I mean, movements have to rule over parties. But, of course, I mean, movements do, don't exhaust themselves in political dimensions. I mean, they have social uh, and other, and other dim technological, what well, other dimensions. I mean, so far, 2011 movements have not expressed the party forms there, other than Podemos, but still Podemos uh, sticks to it, uh, especially after Errejon got sidelined, in my opinion, I'm not a Spaniard, but it seems to me that the Leninist uh, kind of leadership model uh, still uh, runs deep. I mean, the Leninist model has uh, ruled that. So, uh, in my, I mean, we need organization. I mean, that's, uh, we're, all, we're all clear that. I, I propose, uh, f as far as a European social front to be conceived, politics, I think we should discuss more. I, it cannot be exhausted in a few lines, but if you think about Belgium, for example, there is this organization of young people called uh, Jacques, uh, Jeunes uh, Organisé Combatif. Uh, they told me the other day, hey, we should do a European movement uh, of, uh, for precarious workers like us, an anti-racist movement of precarious workers, but let's not call it a syndicate. Let's not call it a union, because that would put young people off. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Well, this is important. You know, these are important uh, uh, ideas. Uh, so we, we should not uh, refer to the past, right? Uh, so I want to open up uh, to the audience um, because we have to move on. We would like to uh, wrap up and go to the next speaker. Okay, yeah, there's one question in the back there.
Um, yes, Michel Bowens. Hi, Geert. Um, so I, you know, I really liked uh, your presentation, Alex, and how you analyzed the evolution of the last few years. But of course, in terms of language, I cannot happen to notice that you never use the word commons. Um, and Ooh, I'm just wondering true. why that is. Um, now, here is my theory, and maybe it's a bad theory, but I, I really think there are two kinds of people. Uh, and they're the, the kind of people who like to fight against something and like to be on the streets, and, and you know, they, they find that as, as, as a meaningful thing. And then there are other people, and I guess I've, I've become that way myself, who rather you know, build new things and construct. And of course, neither side alone is going to do it. So it's, it's, for me, it's a question of combining both energies and aligning uh, you know, new solutions, like what we saw with Common Coin and in Milano. I, you know, I think this is a really amazing, and I don't know if you remember my scheme in the beginning yes. with you know, contributive accounting. That's what they're doing, and the membrane. I mean, this is like a textbook commoning approach. So why not use a language? This is my question. Why, why don't okay. you use that language? I mean, I'm glad you... Okay, if communism is a travesty of communism, I'm not interested, let's, let's say, to say. If, instead, communism is part of a new radical ideology, I stick to it. What, I mean, I, I learned, I mean, peer-to-peer -peer foundation, I admire your work and stuff, but it strikes me as a bit... Uh, non-political in, in the sense, non, non grounded in historical processes, okay? That is, who's going to defend the commons? In the end, it's the brick and the ballot. And the brick helps get the ballot. I mean, in my, well, that's my view. Okay, but uh, what I mean to say is that how is post-capitalism, I mean, we talked in, uh, privately, how is cap post-capitalism going to be diffused and spread? <laughs> Not by the diffusion of good practices like Macau's, although they are good practices, I agree, and I was fascinated. It's spread through conflict. I mean, I think like uh, the reason of the commons, uh, but I might be wrong, uh, leaves out the question of power, of domination over uh, subjugation, and how you know, <laughs> rebellion and collaboration. But. but in my opinion, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, like uh, uh, Barcelona and Naples uh, as uh, maybe the only survived uh, results, and they started from uh, uh, a fighting for the commons uh, in a way. Uh, and also, also, Mac also Macau probably has been the only occupier in Italy. Yeah. Anyway. Um, we were told to, uh, to wrap up. Thank you very much. And um, please download the book. It's for free. Hmm? Yeah. Yes, John. Thank you. Thank you very much.